more wet. The more of the. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Conscious Life TV. We have decided to start a series for single mothers. Our videos are going to be very short, probably five to seven minutes each video. Um, but we are building up to our annual single mothers event where we try to, right before Christmas time, get a group of single moms together. Um, love on them, take them out to dinner somewhere really nice. Um, we did a single mom's tea last year at Chateau on the Lake. And just show them appreciation, give them some money to help them through Christmas. Christmas is such a, or has the potential to be such a dramatic time for single mothers because you want to love on your children you want to get them presents you want them to have all of the magic of christmas time but often single mothers don't have the resources to make it special for their kids and because i was a single mother and i went through this with my children it's really on my heart to love on mamas this time of year so from from now until December until Christmas time, we are going to be putting out weekly videos about being a single mom. Obviously, there are single fathers. Some of the information that we're going to talk about will be applicable to dads, but I'm speaking from my experience as a woman and as a single mother, so that's where I'm coming from. As time goes on, we will be providing extra information about our event, so if you would like to participate or donate, you'll be able to do that. The first topic that I wanted to discuss was just what to do when the bottom falls out. The dissolution of a family is probably one of the most traumatic things that can happen to children and to adults. Um, it is very rare that two people have maintained a close friendship and they can sit and lovingly say, you know, this isn't working out and we need to part ways. I have been very blessed and privileged to see some couples who have handled it like that, but more often than not, the dissolution of a marriage and a family is full of drama and pain. So um, you have to take a step back from the drama, the hurt feelings. And it's very difficult when you're in it, but you have to immediately, it's like a trauma, you're, you're going into survival mode. You have to immediately take a step back from it as an adult. And if you can't do it alone, find someone to help you work your way through it, just the basics. So what to do when the bottom falls out? Children still need to be cared for. And they need to be cared for in, in such a way that everything isn't tainted by the dissolution of the marriage, um, ch children see themselves as an extension of their parents and of their parents' marriage. So oftentimes when a marriage falls apart, children take responsibility on themselves. Oh, it's my fault that dad wanted to leave or that mom wanted to leave. Or I, if I was a better kid, maybe they wouldn't have been so stressed out. This is just something that naturally happens, I believe, with most children. And, and so you have to be able to create an environment that is still peaceful because everyone is going to be hurting. And we have to remember going forward that children are innocent. So that's the first thing I would say to do is assess your home situation and make sure that it's peaceful. Yes, you're hurting. You might be angry. There might be cheating or drugs or a lot of hurt feelings involved, but it's actually not the child's problem. And they deserve their best chance, I'll say that. They're innocent, I've said that a lot, but children are innocent, and just because the marriage hasn't worked out doesn't mean that they stop getting their best chance at life. And sometimes, unfortunately, a child's best chance at life is for the marriage to be dissolved. Because the truth is, the parents are not setting a good example for their children, teaching them how a man treats a woman, how a woman treats a man, um, that we don't settle 
in our life, we do do the hard work. You know, we don't haphazardly walk away from a commitment that we've made, but if we have given something our all and people are just miserable and making one another miserable, that's not a good environment for their children. And they do deserve their best chance at life. So set your environments up for peace. Don't speak negatively all the time. Um, it's not good for you. It's not good for the child. Whatever we're speaking, whatever we're thinking, we give power to. So you immediately in a situation as a woman, especially because you bring life to the home, you bring love to the home. It's, it's your warmth that fills the house. So let your words be words that are affirming, that are life-giving, that are powerful. And if you can't do that, then just keep your mouth shut and hug your kids. I mean, to be honest with you, they are already dealing with enough fear and negativity as a result of the dissolution of the marriage. From a practical standpoint, when the bottom falls out, you have to immediately get on top of budget and finances because those are the things I feel, well, in my own personal life, but as I've also worked with other single moms, finances are just the thing that you lose the most sleep over. You know, you can't afford to take your kids on vacation. Sometimes you can't afford to pay the electric bill. Nobody wants to go on any kind of government assistance, even though everyone is paid into it. And so you're going through all of this, but if you set yourself up from the beginning for financial success, if you immediately sit and assess where you are financially and what you need to do to give yourself peace of mind, in the long run, you're going to be a lot happier. You don't want to be dealing with a broken heart and the broken heart of the child or children and also trying to figure out amidst all that confusion finances, especially if you weren't the person who was in charge of finances in the first place. So you've got twice as much um, information to try to figure out. And if you can't figure it out on your own, find somebody that you can trust to help you look at where you're at and what you need to do to start rebuilding your life. And without being ashamed. You don't have to look very far on the internet to find someone speaking on finances. You know, I was always really embarrassed about my financial situation and I didn't know what to do about it. I, I didn't come from a financially successful family. So I, I was literally learning everything through trial and error. And that's okay because that's where some of us start. But the point is in life, you start somewhere. You know, it, it's no different than trying to lose weight in the gym, right? Someone decides they're tired of being overweight or they're tired of being out of shape or they want to have more endurance or they're tired of their back hurting. So they go maybe sign up for a gym membership and then they never go to the gym because they're embarrassed because they feel like everybody's looking at them because they're out of shape. Right? It doesn't make any sense. Everybody starts somewhere. The truth is that every person in that gym started somewhere. No, very few people are just naturally muscular and fit. We, we don't know what other people are dealing with on the back end either. So when I was a personal trainer, I used to tell my clients, nobody in here is looking at you. They're all thinking about themselves. They're thinking about their spouse the bills they need to pay, they're looking at their muscles, you know, you see people flexing all the time in the gym, just go do your thing. You should never not start a journey because you are embarrassed of your starting point. I will tell you this, every person that I admire, every person that I learn from has started at the bottom. They have all got a story. So let your story be the thing that when you overcome it, inspires someone else. I will go into more detail on each of these topics in later videos, but the other thing I would say um, that you needed to do was set yourself up some type of schedule. When a person is depressed, when they're heartbroken, there's kind of a cloud around your mind. It's hard to make good decisions. It's hard to want to do anything. So oftentimes 
we we don't do anything we're always late we're always running behind to something you know we're just kind of a mess when we're in that emotional broken state so set yourself up some kind of a schedule something i did with my kids i had a weekly schedule of things that we are going to do mondays were always hard for us the first day back at school the first day back at work so monday night was always a movie night we'd have an easy dinner we'd watch a movie we'd just relax after homework and whatever was done Tuesday night was always an outing. We'd go to the nature park or somewhere free that the kids could walk and hike and explore. Wednesday we did midweek a story night. And what that meant for us is sometimes we would read books, but sometimes we would make up stories. I'd put the kids in a circle and I'd start with once upon a time there was. And then we'd just go around in the circle and add to the story. It was a lot of fun. We had so much laughter and joy on those evenings and then Thursday nights um, I usually didn't have the kids so that was just my time to just decompress and you know if I needed to go run if I wanted to paint my toenails whatever I take a long bubble bath whatever I needed to do to try to get my heart and head right that's what I did Thursday nights and then Fridays we would always do some kind of family outing or have sleepovers so, but this was our routine. We did this every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, with the exception of school events or you know, holidays, things like that. But it helped to keep us on point. It helped give us something to look forward to so everybody wasn't always thinking of the negative things that were going on in our lives. And then the other thing I would say you know, that goes along with negative speaking is watch what you're listening to you know your ears and your eyes are gateways so what we look at constantly we think about what we hear constantly we think about monitor the music you're listening to don't listen to depressing music all the time if nothing else find an instrumental musician that you like there are a ton of musicians and playlists on youtube that are inspiring and positive and for that matter there are plenty of motivational speakers on youtube that are talking about what they overcame or just giving little tidbits of wisdom, keep a positive playlist running in your background. You're gonna need it to go through the heartbreak. You know, the sun will shine again. When a family falls apart, you feel like that's it for you, oftentimes. Some people may not feel this way, you know, and if you don't have a strong support system from your extended family, it's even more difficult. You feel more alone. You feel like you're the only person who can't seem to pay the bills on time. You feel like you're the only person that's getting their electricity cut off or the only person that might have to use food stamps. And it's really depressing. And to keep you on the path, I had a mentor and she would always say, stay the path, Heather. You're doing a good job stay the path don't look at all the negative stuff address the issues that you need to address but stay the path and that's what i would encourage you to do you have to keep positive things in front of you going into your ears and whatever you're reading friendships are important too um and we will get into this in detail later but don't hang around people that are constantly feeding you with negative information. All of your intake of information, especially at this point in your life, needs to be life-giving so that you can be strong to make it through what you're walking through and so that you can give the best version of yourself to your children because they need it more than ever. So thank you for watching Conscious Life TV. More topics in the Single Mom series to come. Have a great day.